Good evening, NABJ. As we, uh, hi. As we look at this tribute and we think about the legends that we've lost, heaven must be a pretty magical place right about now, don't you agree? And um, I can't help but think that there's one super duper publicist up there arranging <laughs> the most amazing photo ops ever. And uh, that's who I'd like to celebrate and ask you to remember tonight as well. Um, I'm very happy and honored that the NABJ has chosen to present an award in my mother's name. And I'm very honored that you would have me here to participate. It means so much to my family. It means so much to, to my industry, to my peers. Um, so I'm just very grateful to be here. Um, I want to thank President Greg Lee. I want to thank the board. I want to thank everyone who had a hand in making this happen. And I have to share a little secret with you. Sometimes, I mean, I presented the first award two years ago, and it was very special. And then I went home, and in the years and months and weeks after, I found myself sneaking onto the computer, onto an ABG website, to make sure that I didn't imagine that that happened and that they were gonna do it again the next year and the year after that. So here we are again, and I, it, it, it means so much every single time. Um, tonight's recipient, um, Dawn Kelly, is a very special lady, but I have to share with you that I didn't know her um, until just a few days ago. But when I met her, it became clear and obvious why she was the recipient of this award this year. Yes, she has a very impressive resume. She has a, a brilliant career, but she has a heart of gold and a personality and a spirit that is very much like Pat Tobin. And so when I met her, we shared a moment and a hug and happy tears. And it was almost as if Pat Tobin was there herself. So thank you, Patrick Riley, and thank you, Valerie Coleman, for helping to facilitate our meeting. Um, I totally went off script. I don't know if I was supposed to be reading the teleprompter or not. But anyway, I apologize. Um, I'd like to present the NABJ 2013 Pat Tobin Media Award to Miss Dawn Kelly. Dawn is an executor. Dawn doesn't do press releases, she tells stories. Dawn is an engaging communicator. I think Dawn Kelly is one of those rare people who was born to do communications work. She's just naturally good at media relations, and I think there's a couple of reasons for that, but one of them is that she's authentic. Everything about her is authentic, and I think that's at really the core of her success. We hope to have a dynamic, spirited conversation about networking, an issue and a skill that's near and dear to my heart. The true indication of, of Dawn being a professional who's really on top of her game, it really boils down to execution. Really, the ability to focus in on what needs to get done, getting it done in a timely fashion, getting the cooperation of stakeholders, whether within her company or outside her company, and then executing in a way that's flawless and seemingly effortless, but we also know it takes a lot of effort. She's a hard worker. What she does best is she can tell a story. She can tell a story about whether it's prudential or in a previous experience I've had with her at AARP. She can tell the story about the plight of elderly people and make people truly understand what that story is about. And that's part of her strength. One of the things that, that she passed on to me was as a, a person that's uh, more quiet in nature is to uh, come to meetings uh, prepared and have certain things that, that you want to say so that when the time comes, you'll be able to uh, use that information for uh, senior leaders and you know what you already want to say and it's prepared, it's thoughtful, and it's concise. What we would like you to take away from here is just to be genuine, be who you are. As a woman of color in the communications industry, it's of utmost importance to have someone that you can look to um, for feedback, uh, for advice, 
on your professional career, and Dawn has always been there for me. The one thing that she's helped me with in a very significant way is to be a much better manager, especially in terms of diversity. I've learned a tremendous amount from Dawn in terms of how to create and maintain a diverse workforce, and a lot of that credit goes to Dawn. Thank you, Lauren. I want to also thank the founding members of NABJ for having the courage to establish this meaningful and vital organization. I applaud NABJ for, being, for inviting us flax into the fold. You realize that journalists and PR, journalists and PR practitioners complement each other. I'm extremely thankful to the NABG, NABJ board and its full and associate members for choosing me for this prestigious award. I also thank my family, friends, and colleagues who have joined with us here tonight, and I salute all the ex salute of excellence winners. NABJ, you are the water that helped me grow and flourish. And when I think about how I began my career in public relations, the words of Aretha Franklin's song, A Natural Woman, come to mind. Looking out on the morning rain, I used to feel so uninspired. And when I knew I had to face another day, Lord, it made me feel so tired. <laughs> Before the day I met you, Life was so unkind, but NABJ, you've been the key to my peace of mind. You've made me feel so alive. Let me explain. When I learned that I was chosen to receive this award in the name of Pat Tobin, who was one of my professional role models, I got goosebumps. I was humbled and overwhelmed with pride. Words that come to mind about Pat are courage, trailblazer, nurturer, relationship builder, and mentor. NABJ was important to Pat, and I feel so lucky and extremely honored that you, my beloved friends, have chosen me, chosen to honor me in her name. You see, I'm the child of blue collar workers who strive to do their best to put me on the right path. And through hard work in high school, I earned scholarships and took out too many loans to get to and through college. Idealistically, I began my college years at Howard University wanting to be Thurgood Marshall. But instead, instead of practicing in the court of public law, I ended up practicing in the court of public opinion, and I couldn't be happier. I tell you this because public relations was not, I didn't study public relations in college. I realized one day after graduating, when I was trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my life, you know those young, wistful days, so that I would be able to provide my children with the good life, I realized that PR could be my vocation. I figured I'm persuasive, I'm creative, I like to write, I love being around people, and I love to talk. <laughs> oh, how I love to talk. So when I first started out eons ago, mentoring was still a foreign word. Back then, many of us learned by reading and by watching what to do and what not to do. So I went looking for role models who looked like me. 
and could help me learn the business, get my footing in public relations, and effectively manage the roles and responsibilities associated with being a great communicator and a great public relations practitioner. One of them was Pat Tobin. The others were Ophel Dukes and Terry Williams. I stand here today on their shoulders. I followed their lead and I joined the Washington DC Association of Black Journalists and the Black Public Relations Society. Many of you know that Pat was one of the co-founders of the Black Public Relations Society. She assured me, and it turned out to be true, that these two organizations would nurture me and make me feel comfortable enough to ask questions and learn. And I cannot tell you how much I learned in my little apartment in D.C. with great journalists like Dorothy Gilliam and Herb Sample, who I work with to write and edit WABJ's newsletter. I was working in D.C. at that time for AARP in my first media relations role. I was still learning the PR game. And through professional development opportunities with Beepers and NABJ, I learned a lot. So when I returned home to New York in the mid-90s, I immediately joined the NYABJ board. Working with the chapter, I lent my PR expertise and the resources of my then employer, York College, to host a high school journalism workshop. And now, with credential. My colleagues and I have been given the opportunity and resources by Bob D. Filippo, Prudential's Chief Communications Officer, who is here with us tonight, to collaborate with NABJ National and also with local chapters and members. I want to shout out the Garden State, the New York chapter, and the Philly chapter, to name a few. Throughout my journey, many people like Pat and many of you here tonight have been my beacons of light. And through informal and formal relationships, I've learned much. Now I look to share my experiences and offer counsel and guidance to anyone who, would, who thinks I may be of assistance. I'm an enthusiastic connector, just like Pat. My mother taught me something early on. I ask you all to make a fist, just like she instructed me. Look at it. She said, Dawn, with a fist, you cannot get anything in or out. So always approach life with an open hand. So to close, I was born to help. I love people, especially the young ones. When they approach me, I'm reminded of a few things. Harriet Tubman's determination, the words lean in from Sheryl Sandberg, and lines from my favorite poem, Mother to Son, by Langston Hughes. Well, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up, bare, with no carpet on the floor. But all the time, I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners. So young people, don't you turn back. Don't you set down, because you find this kind of hard. Don't you fall now. Thank you, NABJ, for keeping me rising. Please welcome back our host, Carrie Champion and Don Lemon.